About 550 people who visited a downtown Toronto strip club last week may have been exposed to COVID-19. An employee at the Brass Rail Tavern has tested positive. The employee worked late shifts on August 4th and 5th and also the 7th and 8th. Toronto Public Health wants anyone who visited during those evenings to closely monitor themselves for symptoms. It says there is no risk to anyone who visited the club outside of those dates. Visitors who gave their name and contact information for contact tracing are being contacted directly. Premier Doug Ford spoke about the possibility of bringing in health inspectors to follow up in his daily COVID-19 briefing. We're going to show how contact tracing works. We're going to be contacting everyone and that was over at this uh, location and uh, we're going to follow up. They have to get tested if there's 500 people. Uh, you got to practice social distancing. You got to put on a mask. I know it sounds ironic talking about that, but you, you have to. It's like any other business. They're a business. We got to treat them like any other business. And maybe we get the health inspectors to go in and, and inspect. To talk more about the risks in strip clubs, both for workers and customers, let's bring in Andrea Warehun. She's a writer and performer in Toronto and also a peer outreach worker with Maggie's Toronto Sex Workers Action Project. So Andrea, what have you heard about this particular outbreak at the Brass Rail? So I've heard what um, everyone else has heard today, that um, a waitress uh, became infected. She tested positive uh, for COVID. Um, worked four shifts and in those four shifts managed to expose 550 um, patrons and workers um, to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't think anyone would be surprised, you know, that bars are the places where you might pick up COVID. A lot of people have been talking about that sort of thing. But are there conditions inside strip clubs that would make it even more likely that the virus could be passed on? I mean, I think bars, um, you know, the strip club is, is sort of a bar plus massage parlor. You know, there's a little bit more contact at a strip club than there is at just a regular bar. So I do think that heightens risk uh, necessarily um, because there is more of a emphasis on contact. Um, even though everyone is expected to uh, play quite safe and to wear masks uh, the entire time, uh, these things happen. Um, and it is important to remember that, you know, this is a strip club. Um, but it wasn't a dancer who got infected. It was a waitress who, you know, it could have been a waitress at any um, bar that got infected. It just happened to be at a strip club. What do you know about what sort of uh, safety measures these type of establishments have put in place since the start of the pandemic? My understanding is that um, the strip clubs in Toronto have been playing by very strict rules. Um, they've been checking the temperature of both patrons and workers when they arrive um, on location. Uh, there's plexiglass everywhere as far as surrounding the bar. Um, there's also um, contact tracing that's enforced um, for everybody that enters the establishment. Um, there's been you know, strict rules as far as um, table spacing and how many people can be in the establishment at any time. So definitely um, in order to open up for phase three, strip clubs have had to adhere by very strict rules. But I'm I'm looking at a news report that's come out already that perhaps the brass ra the brass rail was not following the guidelines as closely as it should have. And in fact, you know, on that point of contact tracing, apparently the the log of visitors, which you know, not only strip clubs but also restaurants are supposed to be keeping track of everyone who comes there for exactly this reason to be able to let them know if someone with COVID-19 was there. Apparently, their log was incomplete which in some ways is not surprising. Maybe people don't want to put uh, down their name when they go into an operation like this. Do you think there is some stigma attached to a, a strip club like this for the customers and maybe even the staff? Absolutely. I mean, it's a sex industry um, establishment. So, of course, there's going to be some fear as far as the patrons are concerned um, to admitting they were even at a strip club. I, I assume it would be an uncomfortable call for a married man to get a call from Toronto Health uh, informing him that he may have been exposed to COVID at a strip club um, if his uh, partner isn't aware that that's what he has been doing with his spare time during the pandemic. Um, so, you know, there's of course that. And then as far as the dancers who work, I mean, they would be highly regulated as far as 
um, ensuring that they're putting their name down and um, all their accurate contact information for working at the club. But many, many sex workers work, um, you know, anonymously, and they don't tell their friends and their family that they work as sex workers because of the stigma. And so that does um, increase the risk of uh, potentially spreading unknowingly um, due to the stigma. Mm -hmm. I'm curious too about the customers and their behavior. Um, you know, it is a bar. People are going to behave maybe a little better at the grocery store than they might in a bar or at a strip club. What typically do you hear from people about the way customers behave in these environments? I mean, even pre-pandemic, you know, uh, it's not uncommon to uh, meet a boundary-pushing customer at a strip club. Of course, that's that's kind of part and parcel of the deal in a gray area um, industry like uh, sex work. So, yeah, I mean, boundary-pushing can be part of it. You're also dealing with a place that serves alcohol, so um, if people are drinking, um, lines tend to get blurred as well. So, um, you know, I'm not saying that that's necessarily what is happening during the pandemic. I'm sure that people are doing their best to adhere by the rules. But I think if you have an environment where people are already pushing boundaries to get what they want and um, there's alcohol and intoxication involved, you're going to find some uncomfortable boundary pushing behavior as well as potentially pressuring workers to do more um for money that they don't actually want to be doing. Hmm. Um, and that's also because of the economic crisis we're in. Right. So one last question for Andrea, and that is, what do you think we can learn from this outbreak at the brass rail? Um, I think we can learn that um, like, sex workers are workers, um, and we deserve um, you know, full decriminalization so that if uh, you know, sex workers are in these boundary-pushing situations during a pandemic, that not only can we um, be open about the fact that customers are putting our lives in danger, but also, you know, the business owners who are looking to benefit from our, our sexual labor. I think it's important for businesses to be held accountable uh, for the way that they're treating their frontline workers at this time. And that goes outside of the sex industry. But, but specifically in um, this context, um, you know, when you put dancers, dancers have one job, that's to dance, um, responsible for sanitizing um, everything that they touch um, when a business is reluctant to, say, hire more cleaners. When you put the responsibility on the dancer to do that, you're jeopardizing everybody's health. And so I think it's important for business owners to um, ensure that um, their workers are um, as healthy as possible and uh, so that the dancers can do their job and ensure that their patrons are um, as healthy as possible as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate your insights into this. Thanks, Diane. Thank you. Andrea Warehan as a Toronto writer and performer.